Hi, and welcome to another episode of Trans 101. Today we're going to be talking about bottom surgery. Now, there are two different types of bottom surgery that are the main ones. There is metoidioplasty and there is phalloplasty. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on metoidioplasty, and in the next episode, I'm going to be talking about phalloplasty. Now, I'm going to try to explain this surgery as simple as I can, but you need to just keep a couple of things in mind. One, not every surgeon performs it exactly how I'm going to explain it. Some have different techniques, some have different methods, some surgeons don't do certain things, but I'm going to give you kind of a brief overview of what metoidioplasty is, just so that you can understand this type of bottom surgery. I will also be using words that some people may not be comfortable with, but I want everyone to understand 100% what I am talking about, so I will be using words that are anatomically correct to a person's body. So with metoidioplasty, what they do is they will take the clitoris, this will be the clitoris, they cut the ligaments underneath so that they can release the clitoris. Now they sew the skin underneath to make it a little more girthy and more phallic like because or else you're just gonna have ligaments here that aren't gonna be very comfortable and just kind of like there. After they do this, they will take the urethra that you have that usually comes out this way. They're going to reroute the urethra and create a new urethra so that it can come out of the tip of the penis. So the next step is that they build a scrotum. So they're going to use the lips that you already have. They're going to cut underneath them to kind of detach them. Some surgeons will fuse the scrotum together so that it's one sac. Others will leave it separate. And then the next step is a vaginectomy. A vaginectomy is basically the closure of the vagina. So basically what they do is they completely remove the hole and they close everything inside. So when you look, you don't see that you ever had anything there. This is the most common form of metoidioplasty, but I will say that not everyone chooses to get everything. Some people don't choose to get a vaginectomy. Some people don't choose to reroute their urethra. Some people don't choose to have a scrotum. It's really what you want in your genitals. You find a surgeon who will do that because anything is possible. If you just want to release the clitoris, you can do that. If you just want to release the clitoris and have urethra lengthening and keep your hole, you can do that. If you want to close the hole and have your release the clitoris and put the urethra, the new urethra, and not have testicle implants, you can do that. So the reason why people might want to have a urethra lengthening is because they want to be able to pee standing up. So usually with metoidioplasty, if you get urethra lengthening, you would be able to pee standing up by holding, or some people don't even have to hold um, their dick and um, let it go. So this method helps individuals who are very, very dysphoric about needing to pee, especially in public, because they don't want to sit down and they cannot use a stand to pee device. Now what about sensation? Well, with metoidioplasty, you're not messing with any nerves, all right? You are cutting the ligaments under the clitoris and sewing them together so that it creates a more phallic shape for your penis, um, but you will not lose sensation. So if somebody goes to suck on you, you will feel it as much as you felt it before. Now, metoidioplasty isn't for everyone. There are some people who don't have enough growth or are too small to get metoidioplasty. Some surgeons will still perform metoidioplasty on people who have very small clitorises. The only issue with that is that some people who have that and get urethra lengthening, it's a little bit complicated to pee. Some people aren't, aren't still aren't able to pee standing up just because of the position of where it is. And the peeing standing up thing could be also a challenge for people who have metoidioplasty who are a little bit bigger just because there's more fat around that area. So what's sex like? Well, people who have had metoidioplasty can have sex. You can have penetrative sex with your partner, yes. But I will say that you do need to be a specific length. Not everyone who gets metoidioplasty can penetrate a partner. Now, if you're going to penetrate somebody who has a vagina, you are able to position yourself where it just kind of goes in, especially because the ligaments under the clitoris have been cut, so you're released. So it's not like you have some constrictions where you have to like climb on top of the person and be on top of them in order to try to get yourself in them. This way, you're, you're really, you're released, so you can just go. Um, it might be a little bit tricky for anal, but you can do it as well, especially if you have length. Now some people who don't have length want to know how to get length. Well, the way to do this, if you're on testosterone and you're still unhappy or if you're not planning on going on testosterone, you can pump. So a pump is basically a device, it's a penis pump. Like I'm just gonna say it's literally a penis pump but it is made for people with smaller penises. Um, so you doing that almost every day will help to kind of elongate the clitoris so that you would have a longer penis once the metoidoplasty is created, created, finished. The other thing that you can do is use DHT cream. I'm not gonna go into DHT cream here but it is a cream that you can put on your genitals to make yourself grow. It does work for a lot of people. I did make a video on this in the past so I will link that in the description below just so that I don't have to talk about it in this video. What are the complication rates for metoidioplasty? 
Okay, so with surgery, any surgery in the entire world, there is a risk of complication. Now, the risk of complications are mostly associated with the urethra. So because a surgeon is literally creating a new urethra to connect to your urethra so that you can pee coming out, so your, your urethra is lengthened, um, there are two main things that can happen here. The first thing is a fistula. Basically, a fistula is a hole in the urethra. So if, I remember a surgeon kind of making this analogy and it really helps. When you're drinking out of a straw and there's a hole in the straw and then there's like liquid that kind of comes out when you're trying to suck and you can't really suck all that well because there is a hole that's kind of just taking that liquid, that's what a fistula is. Some fistulas do repair themselves on their own. Some do need surgical um, repairment. How common is this? I can't give you a number. Every surgeon literally has a different percentage of, of the complication rate. Um, some surgeons have said 10%, others have said 40%, so I literally, I cannot give you a percentage, but it does happen. But it doesn't happen to everyone, okay? And the second complication that can have related to urethra is a stricture, and that is a narrowing of the urethra. So basically with that, usually you need to get surgical intervention because they need to dilate the urethra in order for you to urinate. And if you're not able to urinate, they'll put a subcubic catheter inside you. Other complications that can arise are obviously infection. Um, some sutures could open up and you could have um, an infection. Uh, something happens often where the testicle implant that is put into the scrotum actually comes out. That is something that happens often because the body I think is just rejecting it, but you can always get surgical intervention to close that and put in more testicles. Usually people recommend to get a testicle that is a bit smaller then, because then the body I believe tries to not reject it as much as if it was a bigger one. So if you have bottom dysphoria, what are the pros of getting metoidioplasty? Well, with metoidioplasty, you would not have to pack anymore because you have a package in your pants now. You have testicles and you have a functioning penis that you can pee from standing up. And there's a lot of things that you can do with it. You can penetrate, you can still feel everything, the nerves are all connected, nothing is wrong there. Now what are the cons of getting metoidioplasty? I, cons I feel are very subjective, I cannot give you an objective view, but I will say this. If you have size dysphoria, metoidioplasty probably isn't for you. And I am saying this because I have gone to a lot of bottom surgery show and tells, and so many people have said that. They have gotten metoidioplasty in the beginning, and then they still had size dysphoria and it wasn't enough for them, so they later on had phalloplasty. If you don't know what phalloplasty is, please take a look at the next video because that's when I explain what that surgery is. So if you have size dysphoria, Please take a long, hard look at this type of surgery and at the growth that you have and really see is this something that would alleviate my dysphoria because I have known people who have gotten metoidioplasty and still had size dysphoria and needed to pack later on. So you had bottom surgery and you still need to pack. A lot of people have bottom surgery so that they don't need to pack. So it just becomes a hassle. I guess a con could also be that complications can happen, but that can happen with any surgery. It can happen with top surgery. It can happen with a hysterectomy. It can happen with anything. What is the cost? of metoidioplasty. Can't answer that one for you either, and I'm so sorry, I can give you a ballpark number. I have seen $15,000 all the way up to $50,000, depending on who you go to, where you go to, what country, and if it's covered by insurance, then most people don't have to pay because insurance pays for it, or you have to pay up front and then insurance will pay you back. And in Canada, the government will pay your metoidioplasty, your bottom surgery, if you go to specific surgeons. So. All of this insurance and how much it costs is very hard. What I would recommend doing is look at the list of surgeons that are available, what type of surgeries that they perform, and then look at how much they cost. And if you want to see if it's covered by insurance, then take a look and see, because some surgeons do not accept insurance. Some surgeons don't accept. It sounds like I'm saying accept accept, whatever. Some don't take insurance, so you really need to do your research, especially when it comes to bottom surgery. I thought this video was going to be a lot longer because there's a lot of information about metoidioplasty, but here we are. I have given you all the information that I can. If I have forgotten anything, I will put in the link in the description below because sometimes I forget things. I'm not a perfect person. I don't have all the information in the entire world. Uh, please take a look at the next video that I will post on the next episode, which is phalloplasty, where I explain what type of surgery that is, what happens, complications, cost that I can't really tell you about, but I can give you a ballpark, type of surgery, and all of this stuff. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you later. <laughs> Bye.